The Yoshihiro Togashi's transition from Yu Yu Hakusho to Hunter x Hunter was driven by a mix of personal necessity and creative ambition. The untimely end of Yu Yu Hakusho was caused by health issues and relentless work pressure as well as some other stuff. Watch my last video to see the full story that led up to this point. After wrapping up Yu Yu Hakusho, Togashi wasn't just tired, he was completely drained. Physically, mentally, creatively, you name it. The final arc of Yu Yu Hakusho was rushed because Togashi was at his breaking point and he admitted in interviews that he wasn't happy with how it ended. Imagine putting your heart and soul into something for years only to feel like you couldn't give it the conclusion it deserved. That is rough. So when he ended the Yu Yu Hakusho, everyone assumed he'd just ride off into the sunset. He made it, he had a series that sold millions and was set for life, never needing to work again. But Togashi isn't the type to just sit still for long. His brain is always buzzing with ideas and after a few years off, he jumped right back into creating. This time, he wanted to do something different, something that would push the boundaries of what a shonen manga could be. Hunter x Hunter was born out of that desire to experiment. Togashi didn't just want to tell another story about a kid getting stronger and beating up bad guys. He wanted to explore the themes of morality, human nature and the complexities of power. From the get go you could tell that Hunter x Hunter was going to be a different beast. The early arcs like the Hunter exam and Heaven's Arena have that classic shonen vibe but even then there was this underlying sense that the story was building towards something bigger and much darker. The series really started to differentiate itself with the York New City arc. This wasn't your typical good versus evil storyline, it was a gritty, morally ambiguous arc that focused on characters like Kurapika and the Phantom Troop, people who aren't just black and white characters but have depth. The protagonist of the arc was a vengeful murderer and the antagonists were likeable assassins. Togashi laid the groundwork for a story that would constantly challenge our expectations. But as Hunter x Hunter grew more ambitious so did its toll on Togashi. Those same health problems that messed up Yu Yu Hakusho, yeah they didn't go away. If anything, they got worse. We're talking about a guy who sometimes had to lie down to draw because sitting was too painful. Togashi was still grinding away at this point but the pain wasn't letting up and that led to a pretty wild ride when it came to the release schedule of Hunter x Hunter. One minute he was pumping out chapters and the next he's on hiatus again. The guy is clearly passionate and he seems more invested in Hunter x Hunter than he ever was in Yu Yu Hakusho. It's more creatively fulfilling and clearly his magnum opus, but you can't exactly ignore chronic pain, it's kinda in the definition. By this point, Hunter x Hunter has almost become more famous for its breaks than its actual story. And while it's easy to joke about, the reality behind those hiatuses is pretty sad. Togashi's health issues, particularly but not limited to his back pain, have been the main culprit. But there's more to it than just physical pain. Creating a manga isn't just physically exhausting, it's mentally draining too. The deadlines are relentless and when you're someone like Togashi who's pouring so much into every chapter, that pressure can be overwhelming. It's not just about drawing panels, it's about crafting a story that's layered, meaningful and satisfying for decades. It's a recipe for burnout. The thing is, Togashi is not just dealing with typical aches and pains, we're talking about a chronic debilitating pain that can make even the simplest tasks unbearable. Imagine trying to draw for hours on end when your back feels like it's on fire. That's the kind of pain Togashi has been dealing with for decades and yet he kept going, taking breaks when he needed to but always coming back because he was passionate about his work. But here's where things get tricky. Each hiatus disrupted the flow of the story and for fans, that's tough to deal with. Hunter x Hunter is a series that thrives on momentum. Tagashi's intricate storytelling and deep character arcs need time to develop. And when there's a break every few chapters, it's hard to keep the momentum going. Fans get frustrated and some even begin to lose interest, which is understandable but also kind of sad when you think about the bigger picture. What makes it even more frustrating is the lack of communication during these hiatuses. Togashi is a pretty private person so when he goes on break we're often left in the dark. Sometimes we'll get an update about his health and he's joined Twitter in the last few years but more often than not, it's just silent. And that uncertainty can be tough for fans who are deeply invested in the series. But here's the thing, despite all the breaks, despite the frustration, Hunter x Hunter remains a series that people care about. There's something about Togashi's storytelling, his characters and the world he's created that keeps fans coming back, even if they have to wait years between chapters. It's a testament to how great his work is, that even with all the interruptions, people are still willing to stick around, hoping for more. It's a complicated relationship no doubt. We want more Hunter x Hunter, but we also want Togashi to take care of himself. It's a balancing act but there are alternatives. As much as I have sympathy for Togashi, the constant hiatuses are also due to his stubborn nature and his unwillingness to compromise. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I post these videos once a week usually and I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Back to the video. Togashi's perfectionism is one of those things that's both a gift and a curse. On one hand, it's what makes Hunter x Hunter so damn good. The attention to detail, the intricate plot lines, the deep character development, 
None of that would be possible without Tagashi's obsessive drive to get everything just right. But on the other hand, that same perfectionism is part of what's made the series have such an irregular release schedule. Tagashi isn't just a perfectionist in terms of the story, he's also a perfectionist when it comes to all aspects of his work. He's one of those rare manga artists who handles almost everything himself. He's had assistance, sure, but Tagashi is involved in every aspect of the process, and that's why the quality of Hunter x Hunter is so consistent even after all these years, but it's also why the series keeps hitting these roadblocks. Tagashi is just not willing to hand off work to others, even when his health is in shambles. This has hurt his work at times, with his art becoming underwhelming and simple in certain chapters. Understandably due to his health issues, but many fans wonder why he doesn't hire an artist and offload some of the illustration duties to them, only focusing on the story and guiding the artist to make sure they keep his style and vision for the manga. Togashi absolutely refuses to make this compromise. One of the most noticeable effects of Togashi's perfectionism is the art. There are times when the art is absolutely stunning, detailed, dynamic and full of life. But there are times when you can tell Togashi was rushing or struggling. Some chapters are just walls of text with minimal art, which can be a bit jarring. It's like he's so focused on getting the story right that the art sometimes takes a back seat. This also shows up in how the story is told. Hunter x Hunter isn't afraid to take his time to dig deep into the world and its characters. Tagashi will spend entire chapters fleshing out a concept or a backstory and while that's great for building a rich immersive world, it can also slow down the pacing and when you combine that with the hiatuses it can make the story feel like it's moving at a glacial pace. But here's the thing, fans are willing to put up with that because they know Tagashi's a genius. They know that every detail, every piece of dialogue is there for a reason. It's all part of this large puzzle that Tagashi is slowly putting together. And that's why even when the art quality dips or the pacing slows to a crawl, fans stick around. They trust that Tagashi's perfectionism is going to pay off in the end, or at least they did at one point. That said, there's no denying that this perfectionism, stubbornness, whatever you want to call it, is taking a toll. It's why the series has been on hiatus so many times. Tagashi's trying to do it all, and it's just not sustainable, but he's stubborn and will not delegate his work. And while he has been able to get away with it in the past, there is not one arc in the manga that has been more negatively affected by this than the Dark Continent. This arc is supposed to be the grand, epic saga that takes Hunter x Hunter to a whole new level. We're talking about a world beyond the known world, literally an uncharted, dangerous land full of unknown threats and unimaginable treasures. It's the kind of place that would send chills down even the most seasoned hunter's spine. And the way Tagashi set it up, you can tell it's going to be a massive undertaking, both in terms of story and art. But bruh, because of the hiatuses, we've only gotten a taste of what the Dark Continent has to offer. The build-up has been intense. We've seen characters like Jing and Pariston, who were just brief appearances to us before, step into the spotlight. We're finally learning more about the Zodiacs, the powerful hunters who have been in the background for so long. And then there's Beyond Netero, the son of the legendary chairman Netero, who's got his own agenda for exploring the Dark Continent. It's all been so exciting, but at the same time, so frustrating. Every time the story starts to pick up steam, we hit another hiatus. And these hiatuses are not like the Earth one will go years without chapters half a year eight months nine months the breaks are insane it's like we're inching closer and closer to this huge revelation but we keep getting stuck right before we get there and because the dark continent arc is so complex with so many moving parts it's hard to keep track of everything when there are such long breaks between chapters and then there's the succession war which is happening alongside the dark continent expedition this part of the story has been just as compelling with the political intrigue the deadly competition between the kakin princes and kurapika's role in the middle of it all there's a storyline following the aftermath of hisoka and krolo's battle as well as jing pariston and beyond's role in the arc so many interesting plot lines so where are we right now Honestly, it's hard to say. The story is at such a delicate place with so many threads hanging in the balance. The Dark Continent arc is full of promise, but it's also the arc that's been hit hardest by the hiatuses. Only 51 chapters have released in the last 10 years. 10 years. And the manga has been on an indefinite hiatus since December 2022. We're about to go into 2025. We're in this weird limbo where the story could go anywhere, but we're not sure when we'll get to see it unfold, if ever. One of the big questions is whether Hunter x Hunter will ever get a proper ending. It's something that weighs heavily on fans, especially since we've seen other long running series like Bleach and Naruto reach their conclusions. But Hunter x Hunter is different. He's always been a bit unconventional and so is Tagashi. He's never really been one to follow the rules and that's reflected in how the story is told. I've hinted at it multiple times throughout this video. I don't think the outlook for Hunter x Hunter is good. 
When he ended Yu Yu Hakusho, it was clear then that if Tagashi felt that what he was doing was not good enough for Jump Magazine, he'd stop. Of course, the context was very different. He was a much younger man and he felt he couldn't meet Jump's standards from a creative level rather than a physical one, but I think there are interesting parallels to draw. In the past, when Tagashi felt like he was in a box creatively and couldn't do what he wanted, he stopped. Unfortunately, I think that if Tagashi keeps trying to draw Hunter x Hunter and is physically incapable, he will just stop and end the manga. It sucks since he said that one of the reasons he loves Hunter x Hunter so much is the creative freedom he has with the manga. There were certain character choices in Yu Yu Hakusho that Jump forced him to make to keep the status quo. There wasn't much room for character deconstruction and growth in shown and Jump manga in the 90s. Let's be real bro, he's too stubborn to let someone else do it and is quickly becoming too fragile to do it himself. He's never been one to delegate tasks, even now with his health issues he has minimal help. As a younger man in his 30s he said, if I ever manage to have a long serialization in Jump, I will end it on my own terms and I believe that is the fate that Hunter x Hunter will suffer. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and yeah, till next time.